Dark Shadows, number 96, BTR 102666, air 11766, take two. My name is Victoria Winters. Collinwood seems a thousand miles away tonight. Yet my only hope is that someone is driving from there to pick me up in Bangor and rescue me. Roger, I was never so glad to see anyone in my whole life. Is Burke still here? No, he left short, shortly after I call, called you. I told you I was told him I was staying overnight here. Has he any idea that what you suspect? No, I don't think so. But Roger, I just couldn't face that long drive back to Collinsport with him, knowing that perhaps he was a murderer. I don't blame you a bit. I just couldn't believe that. Now don't worry. We have a long time to talk about everything. We, where's your luggage? It's in the lobby. All right, we'd better, we'd better get ready. Now, are you all right? Because you don't have anything to worry about with me. Tell me about it. Well, it was in the, the restaurant where you met me. Burke came in there with a business associate of his, a, a Mr. Blair. Mr. Blair sat down to look at some papers and he took out a pen. And it was identical to the one I'd found. Well, that sounds odd. What was so special about it? it had all that silver filigree work on it. I would have recognized it anywhere. Was it like the one you thought David had stolen? Yes, it was exactly like it. And when I asked Mr. Blair about it, he said there were only six of them in the whole world. Four of them are in South America. He has one, and Burke has the other. And that must have been the one I found at Lookout Point, exactly on the spot where Bill Malloy was killed. You mean where he had his accident, don't you? Well, I don't know what I mean anymore. It's Burke. Over here, your conversation with Blair? No, he was out of the room. No, all I meant was you didn't make such a big thing about it that Blair might have said something to Burke about that pen. No, I don't think so. He had his mind on the contracts. Well, this question of the pen may never come up. But don't you understand? The fact that I found it where I did places Burke at the scene of the... the accident. Well, if I were you, Vicky, I wouldn't mention the pen to anyone. I have to. Well, it's such a flimsy piece of evidence. You might have lost it there several days before that sad event, or, or even afterwards. I don't believe that for one minute, and I don't think you do either. Well, perhaps not. But I would hate to ask that the case be reopened on such a weak claim. You know, Burke is a vindictive man. All it'll do is make an enemy for you. On the other hand, something has to be done. Perhaps I should talk to Mrs. Stoddard. I would much prefer you didn't. You're a bit of a mystery yourself, Roger. Burke is out to destroy you. I should think that you'd leap at an opportunity to discredit him. Oh, I would. I'd love it. But I don't think this is quite the right time. First of all, I can't think of any motive why Burke would have for wanting to harm a lawyer. That's true. They were friends, weren't they? Yeah, the whole thing is so inadequate. Besides, there's one very important thing that you're overlooking. You no longer have the pen. But I could describe Mr. Blair's pen, and Mr. Blair said that his was identical to Burke's. Yeah, but Blair works for Burke. Do you think he would stick to that story once he knew the purpose of the questions? I suppose he wouldn't. Well, the other one must be somewhere in Collinwood. We'll just have to look and find where David hid it. Well, knowing my son, if he wanted to hide something, he'd hide it somewhere where it could never be found. <laughs> <laughs> 
Why are you turning off the main road? Well, when I drove up, there were a couple of places where the road had been almost washed out. I, I think this back road is going to be safer. So desolate. I don't see any light. you're so late. I uh, would like to use your telephone. My car is stalled about a half mile down the road. The battery's shorted, so I can't use the radio. Well, of course. Come into the drawing room. There's a fire in there. You can put your things by the door. Oh, thanks. I'm sorry to drag all this water in here. Don't give it a second thought. Bad. Make all the phone calls you want. Oh, thank you. Oh, by the way, is everyone else here at home? Well, Miss Winters is in Bangor, but the rest of the family are home. Oh, well, that's good. They'd never get up that hill. The uh, rain has caused a washout on the road. We'll fix it, though, as soon as it dries out a bit. Well, thank you. I'll get you some coffee. Oh, please don't bother. No bother. Oh, hello, Cal. George. <laughs> I sure hate to get you out on a night like this, but my car is stalled on the Valley Road. Yeah, about half a mile from Collinwood. That's where I'm calling from. Get someone to haul it in, will you, and then bring the other car up to me? Well, you can't abandon state property, can you? It wouldn't look good. If there's any other news, you call me up here. Yeah, right. Uh, hello, is uh, Trooper Woodard there? Oh, Chuck, this is George. Yeah, on the road south of the Oak Crossing, there's a block culvert, and the water's coming over the road like a river. Yeah, you ought to notify the barracks so they can broadcast a warning. Uh-huh, that's the place. Yeah, and if you want me, I'm up at Collinwood. Right, good night. Thank you. You know what amazes me on a night like this, that we don't have more accidents than we do. That's one thing I don't have to worry about. I haven't driven a car in 18 years. <laughs> well, they've changed a little in that time. Of course, a lot of things have changed. Yes. Yes, they have. You know, I suppose, that it's all over town that Burke Devlin is trying to buy the Logansport cannery, and that he's trying to get some of your key men away from you. Bad news travel faster than good. Well, there are a lot of people around town who would like to help you if they could. Be a sad day for Collinsport if anything happened to Collins Enterprises. It's the backbone of the town. I know. That's why my father was disappointed when I came along. <laughs> How do you mean? He wanted a boy, of course. Oh, you've done right well, Mrs. Stoddard. He'd be proud of you. Mm. Hello? Yes, he is. It's for you, George. Oh. Thank you. Hello? Oh, yes, Cal. The back road to Bangor. I see. Well, all right, as soon as you can get up here with the other car, we'll make a trip out there and put some flares up. Yeah, and hurry it up, will you? Well, the back road to Bangor is completely impassable. It's like a flash flood. Well, nobody in their right mind would use that road anyway. Well, there are still a few houses up there, but uh, it is lonely country, all right. <laughs> Can't you see anything? Well, just barely. I wish we hadn't turned off the main road onto this back road. I told you, it looked as though it might be washed out. You think this looks any better? No, not at the moment, no. I haven't seen a light for miles. 
I don't believe I've seen the road in miles. You don't think we're lost, do you? Of course not. I've driven this road hundreds of times. I don't think this is going to no. last. Your information, Vicky. Uh, no, Easter usually lasts three days. Is that what this is? Well, if it's not, it's remarkably like one. So I were about to drive right into the Atlantic Ocean. There's a pond there. Yeah, better get out and take a look. Now you stay right here. Now where do you think I'd go? Well, I might take a little time. I have to see if that water is too deep to go through. Couldn't we just turn around and go back? Oh, I'm sure it would be much worse than that behind us. Well, please don't be long. Well, what have you got to be afraid of? You said yourself you haven't seen a light for miles. I know, but please hurry. I'll be back as quickly as I can. Uh, what took you so long? There isn't the faintest chance of getting through that water. It's much too deep. Well, what are we going to do? Well, I scouted around and I found an abandoned shack not far away, back down the road. Abandoned? Hmm. The door wasn't locked and it looked like it hadn't been lived in for years. And there was a stove. Oh, that sounds wonderful. Well, it's not so wonderful. I think the battery is short-circuited. Was there any firewood in the place? No, but there were some crates and barrels. We could burn them if necessary. I think you better get out on this side. Oh, but wait a minute. I think I'll leave a note first. In case anyone comes along, they'll know where to look for us. Who's going to come along this road? Well, you never know. Maybe even Bill Malloy's ghost. Please don't joke about things like that. <laughs> I'm sorry. There. Right. All right. And when you get out, keep your head down, and I'll try to cover you with the umbrella. It's really coming down. Well, thanks for the use of your telephone, and thanks for the coffee. Not at all. Would your men like some coffee? Well, I'm sure they would. Thanks anyway, but I don't think we better take the time. Oh, uh, by the way, you're sure everyone is asleep here now? Let's see if we can get this lamp to work. Well, that's luck. There was some kerosene in it. Now, let's start on this fire. You want to bring some of this paper over? Here's some kindling if it's dry, yeah. We don't need much to start it with. Right, more later on. Now. There. I think it's going to catch. 
Yeah. Well, it's not exactly cozy, is it? Oh, it looks like the bridal suite at the Waldorf Astoria <laughs> to me. I should have carried you over the threshold. You forget you're already married. Yes, you can call it that. Unfortunately, it didn't quite work out that way. David told me that you and Laura didn't get along too well. Well, that's an understatement. I think we can find many more pleasant things to talk about, Vicky. Let's sit down. Roger, yeah. I wonder why David would admit that he stole the pen and then lied about where he'd hidden it. I can't answer that. In fact, there's very little about David that I can answer. Any more than I can account for his friendship with Burke. Isn't it strange that those two should become friends? No, it's not at all strange. They're very much alike. They would both go to almost any extremes to get what they want. But you're not like that at all. You seem very confident. You, you must have gotten that from his mother. Well, I hope he didn't inherit any of her other tendencies. Roger, I know so little about you. You know everything about me, not that there's so very much to know. Tell me, what, what do you want out of life? Well, right now there are only two things I want very much. What are they? I want someone to come through that door and rescue us from this dank and ill-smelling shack. <laughs> there I agree with you. And what's the other one? I want you to leave Collinwood. <laughs> I know it must sound like a broken record, Vicky. But I seriously think you're in personal danger. But you yourself said that the pen wasn't very strong evidence. Well, I know Burke better than you do. I know what he's capable of. He's absolutely determined to have himself absolved from that manslaughter charge. He still insists he's innocent. Well, you were in the car with him, you ought to know. Well, so was Laura. We both were. Burke was the only one who was so drunk he didn't remember anything. But now he said that Bill Malloy was going to clear him of that charge. So why would he kill him? Vicky, Malloy was jealous of me. Before I came back to Collinsport, he was entirely in charge of the Collins Enterprises. But naturally, when I came back, he had to be demoted. He would have done anything to get rid of me, even if it meant siding with Burke and, and getting someone to testify falsely against me. But I still don't see why Burke would have killed him. Well, I believe at the last minute, this hired witness just wouldn't go through with it. And Burke got mad. You know, he has a vile temper. They quarreled, he and Malloy, and I think that was the end of Malloy. But you don't think it was deliberate? No, I think it was probably accidental, but a judge and jury might not believe it. And then, when you said you wanted to get me out of Collinwood... I was thinking only of your own personal safety. If Burke ever discovered that you found that pen, I shudder to think of the consequences. Are you positive he didn't see or overhear anything that you said to Blair about that pen business? I'm sure of it. What did he say when you told him you wouldn't go back to Collinsport with him? Nothing much. He seemed annoyed. Yeah. Annoyed at not having those long hours to question you more. No, I imagine he thought, how like a woman, always changing her mind. Vicky, I want you to promise me never to mention that pen to anyone, anyone at all. But why? Well, because I think that it would sure to be get back to Burke. And then your life would not be worth very much. I just can't believe that Burke would... Well, evidently, Malloy didn't believe it either. I still think I should go to the police. No, you mustn't. You mustn't say anything to Carolyn, to David, to my sister, or to the police. But it's withholding evidence. Then withhold it, you little idiot. Vicky, don't you see? I'm the one that Burke is trying to pin that on. I'm the one that he was trying to pin that manslaughter charge on. So in a sense, I'm more in the middle of this than anybody could possibly be. I realize that. If you mention that pen, it'll get back to Burke. And as soon as that happens, he'll call to Blair. 
and tell him to dispose of that duplicate pen. Then we haven't got a shred of evidence. I hadn't thought of that. Well, it's time you think of it. Uh. <laughs> well, I bet you're glad to see me. Uh. We uh, found the note on your car. Well, thank heaven. How did you find us? Well, we were uh, setting flares out along the road because of the washout, and we saw the car. Well, I hope you weren't too worried, Miss Winters. No, no, I wasn't. Well, is anything wrong? No, nothing at all. Well, let's get you out of here, then. Watch the puddles. Stay tuned for where the action is next on ABC. Dark Shadows is a Dan Curtis production. Thank you.